if we turn this coal power plant into a nuclear one? Okay, people from coal country, uh, I know that you love coal because it puts food on the table and because it provides you with the necessary income. And I also know that it feels like an attack anytime someone tells the world that they need to stop using coal. But let's imagine a future where we harness nuclear power to not only reduce our harmful emissions, but also to revitalize existing coal plants into modern, new, clean and efficient sources of energy. Exactly. Your source of income can be leveled up into something better. These nuclear power plants can revive entire local communities and regional communities. Communities that are now teetering because people dislike coal. They want to get rid of coal and they say, okay, well, this is the bottom line. Your coal plant will shut down whether you like it or not. So that's why the United States is pursuing these coal to nuclear conversions. And they trust in this process so much that they are even exporting this policy to other countries. For instance, Poland. Poland is a country with almost 40 million people. More than 80,000 people work in the coal industry in Poland. A lot of these people work underground, by the way. So in order to modernize their country, Poland is pursuing aggressively to become a nuclear power in Europe. They are planning to build American-made AP-1000s. They are planning to build small modular reactors, the BWRX-300. And they just announced that they also have power purchase agreements for, I believe, another 20 PWR-20s, which are tiny, tiny little nuclear power plants that can be used uh, near small factories that need to have power that's always on. And to show their commitment, the United States have recently sent John Kerry over to Poland, the Czech Republic, and Slovakia to tell them that the United States is going to support their endeavor to find suitable candidates to transform coal power plants into nuclear power plants. And it's obvious, just one look at the map should say it all. These countries are littered by coal-fired power plants. And if we zoom out further, we can see that coal is everywhere on the planet. Every major industrial country is using coal in some capacity or another. And the beauty of it is, is that the Department of Energy has looked into the coal fleet of the United States and they have determined that 80% of all these coal-fired power plants can be turned into nuclear power plants. So this means that there's heaps of coal plants that can be leveled up. And this makes a lot of sense from a financial standpoint. One, you can reuse all the buildings that are on the site. You can use the cooling infrastructure that is on the site. You can reuse the generators if you find the right technology. Uh, you can reuse the transmission lines that attach the plant to the grid. And most importantly of all, but the human capital involved, the people who already work at the plant, many of them can be retrained to keep working. Because, you know, for instance, if you are a mechanic that used to work on the steam turbine of the coal plant, I mean, the steam turbine is not going to change. The only thing that is going to change is the place where it gets its heat from. So a lot of the jobs that are already present in this coal-fired power plant can be transferred over when it turns into a nuclear plant. The only trouble is that you can't use light water reactors to do this because light water reactors don't reach the temperatures required. So how can we change this? How can we turn a coal-fired power plant into a nuclear power plant when what light water reactors won't work. So let's see this, this coal-fired power plant. What you see there, the brown bit, that is the coal furnace. What you see is a blue pipe going towards the coal furnace and you see a red pipe coming out of there. So what happens is once this steam has been heated up to a sufficient level, uh, then it goes to uh, the first turbine, which is uh, this thing right here. And then after it has passed through the first turbine, it has already lost some of its temperature and it already has lost some of its pressure. Uh, so you go into a bigger turbine 
uh, that is designed to get the most out of this team as it possibly can. So this green axle over here then uh, takes the rotation energy and puts it into the generators. Below the steam turbines you can see the condenser. So what happens is once the steam is past the large turbine it basically uh, goes down into a condenser where it is cooled to such a degree that the steam then turns into liquid water again. So but what we want is uh, we basically want to build something something new that is going to turn those st same steam turbines that you that you just saw which are which are down there the only thing that has changed is we've demolished the coal furnace and basically what we do is uh, we build a new building um, you know a little way uh, away from the original coal fired furnace um, because obviously you need the space to start building it. So what you do next is you install your, your heat source, which in my case is a molten salt reactor. Uh, this molten salt reactor has a, a red outlet, which is the hot outlet. It's not red in real life, but you know. Um, so the hot salt then passes uh, through a set of heat exchangers. So in this picture, there are only two. I've modeled only two, otherwise it would become two. Uh, complex. So once this system is installed, um, you can you can use your steam turbines the way you did it before, and, and and keep producing electricity from the same steam turbines and generator that were that used to be powered by the coal fired furnace. So also interesting is what China is doing currently. So China is the first country after the United States. Uh, to build a molten salt reactor, an operational molten salt reactor. So they basically now have the tool uh, to convert uh, their own coal-fired power plants, and they have many. In all, if you look at the total uh, capacity around the world, it's more than two terawatts. So there's a lot of uh, potential out there for turning uh, dirty coal plants into clean nuclear power plants. So what's very interesting is that we have a consortium here in the West uh, which is being led by a company that is called Terra Praxis. So they are currently looking for opportunities in, in the West to start turning coal plants into nuclear plants. Now it's very interesting because when you consider their website, uh, you can see that they already have, uh, you know, almost a dozen uh, startups, companies that are working on new nuclear designs. And there's Oklo, there's Copenhagen Atomics, there's Seaborg, there's Ultrasafe Nuclear, there's X Energy, and then there's Terrestrial Energy. There's also Westinghouse. Uh, I believe that Westinghouse is maybe incorporated for something else because they also do fuel. Uh, maybe that's the reason why they're up there because I believe that they are uh, selected as the partner to, to do all the fuel stuff for terrestrial energy to make sure that they get a, a supply line ready. Um, so this is, this is very interesting stuff that's all going on. Uh, over at Terra Praxis. So as it stands, if you ask me who is leading the pack, uh, that's Terrestrial Energy. Terrestrial Energy has by far done the most engineering. They have uh, passed the most licensing hoops. I would like to urge you uh, to visit the Terra Praxis website and browse it for it contains a wealth of information and it shows the most credible path uh, to get rid of coal. Uh, while not sacrificing those who live good lives thanks to the coal industry. Um, but Terra Praxis and those who want to level up coal plants into nuclear power plants, they offer them something much better. Uh, also take note of the fact that Terra Praxis is also being supported by Microsoft and Google in this endeavor and it shows you just how credible the entire story is. Thank you all for watching. And have a nice day. Bye-bye.